Hello, thanks for watching 5-9, Dividing Fractions. On this one, um, you definitely want to make sure that you write down all the information. So press pause before we work out anything because it's a little bit different. We want to make sure that you want, as always, you're able to apply what we're talking about on a test or a quiz. So when we divide, there's an interesting relationship that we need to understand. Okay, it says dividing by half gives the same answer as multiplying by 2. The numbers half and 2 have a special relationship. Their product is 1. Now remember, product means to multiply. So if I take 1 half times 2, and we know this can be written as 2 over 1, you're going to get 2 over 2, which is 1. Okay, so this special relationship has a name. So any two numbers whose product of one has, I'm sorry, any two numbers with a product of one are called reciprocals. And this is a key word when we are dividing fractions. Okay, reciprocals. So if you look at this problem down here, if I take three divided by one half, it equals six. So you're taking three and you're figuring out how many halves it has. Okay, it has six halves. That's how they get six. You also see that 3 times 2 is 6. So two different types of problems, the same answer. Okay, since it gives us the same answer, we're going to talk about a special relationship or a special um, process that we can use when dividing fractions. It's going to make it a lot easier for us. Um, and we're going to follow that process using our reciprocals every time we divide fractions. Okay, so first we just want to make sure that we understand a reciprocal. So we're going to find the reciprocal of each number. Now reciprocal, some people will also call it a reciprocal because you're flipping the number. Okay, reciprocal, reciprocal. Okay, you're flipping it. So the reciprocal of three-fifths would be, if I flip it over, I get five over three. Okay, that's my reciprocal of my number. The reciprocal of th one third is three over one, and we know three over one is the same as just plain three. The reciprocal of twelve. Now remember, twelve is the same thing as twelve over one. So when I flip that upside down, I get one twelfth. And remember, you can test this because we know it's going to be a reciprocal if I take three fifths times 5 thirds and I get 1. Okay, I get 15 over 15. We know any number divided by itself is 1. Okay, so that's another way to test to make sure you have the correct reciprocal. Notice how these are all fractions or whole numbers. We have not talked about how we would deal with mixed numbers, but we will at a later time when we talk about dividing mixed numbers. Okay, so we're just talking about fractions and whole numbers at this point. So here's your rules for dividing, okay? So I have 1 8 divided by 3 fourths. The first thing you're going to do is change division to multiplication, okay? Change division to multiplication, and then you change only the second fraction to its reciprocal, okay? Make sure you're writing this down. Then you would multiply the fraction, as we always have. So you can cross-reduce, and then multiply numerators by denominators. I'm sorry, I'll multiply numerators, that answer, over your denominators, product. Okay, you, another way you may have heard about this is to flip, defy, and multiply. Okay, so you flip the second number and you multiply it. Flip, defy, and multiply. So you're using your reciprocal, you're flipping it. Okay, your division changes to multiplication. So all of our division problems, we're now turning multiplication. And since we're turning them to multiplication, we're now going to use all those rules that we've already talked about in regards to how we multiply fractions. Okay, so 1 8 times 4 thirds, I can cross reduce the 8 and the 4 by 4, and I get 1 and 2. And then 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 3 is 6, I can't reduce it, and I get 1 sixth. Remember, you do not have to cross reduce if you don't want to. It's just going to take some of the simplifying out of your answer. Okay, so let's try one. So I have one half divided by two thirds. 
All right, so I have a 1 half stays the same. First number stays the same. Division changes to multiplication, and I flip 2 thirds. It's my reciprocal. Flip it over, 3 over 2. Okay, you're going to check for any cross reducing. I can't take 1 and 2 and divide it by anything other than 1, so I leave it alone. 2 and 3, I can't divide them by anything other than 1, so I leave that alone. So I'm going to multiply across. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. That cannot be simplified, so 3 fourths is your answer. Okay, so once again, first one stays the same, division to multiplication, second number switches to its reciprocal. 3 fourths divided by 9 tenths. Okay, pause it and rewrite this one yourself and see if you got, or, well, um, write it the same way as I do, you wrote it, wrote it correctly. So you're going to get 3 fourths, stays the same, division to multiplication, 9 tenths, I'm going to flip it to get 10 ninths. Okay, in this particular problem, you can cross-reduce. The 3 and the 9 can be divided by 3. Okay, and it's helpful to do this. It's very helpful to cross-reduce. So I encourage you to do that. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, looking at the 4 and the 10, you will notice that you can divide a 2 into both these numbers. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay, so now I have 1 times 5, which is 5. 2 times 3, which is 6. Once again, I can't simplify, so that's my answer. Okay, last one. 5 eighths divided by 2. So 5 eighths stays the same. Change division to multiplication. And 2 as a whole number is 2 over 1. So I'm going to flip that over and get 1 half. All right, and I'm going to check for cross-reducing. Nothing can go into 5 and 2, so I leave it alone. Nothing can go into the 8 and the 1 other than 1, so I leave that alone as well. So I have 5 times 1, which is 5. 8 times 2, which is 16. That can't be reduced. And there's my answer. Okay, so rule for division. First fraction stays the same. Change division to multiplication. Flip the second number. Okay, and like I said, when we go over um, mi dividing mixed numbers, we're just going to add in an extra aspect of changing those mixed numbers to improper fractions and then flipping them. So it'll be one step you, more that you have to do than we're doing right now. Okay, get very comfortable with cross-reducing because it's going to become very, very helpful when we are using those mixed numbers because those numbers are going to get really big as we change them to improper fractions. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. If there's any questions you may have, make sure you ask Mr. Cooling or I tomorrow.